Thank you for coming to our third uh, annual uh, Integrate Summit. Uh, this is actually my first uh, time here. Uh, so maybe I'll take a minute to introduce myself. My name is Bill Staples, and I run the application platform team uh, under Scott Guthrie as part of the Cloud and Enterprise Group. What that means is I'm responsible for the engineering efforts around uh, BizTalk server and services, as well as the broader application platform that ships as part of Windows Server and Windows Azure, Microsoft Azure. Uh, that includes all of the web technologies like IIS, ASP.NET, our Visual Studio tooling for web uh, and application development, uh, both, uh, again, on-premise uh, as well as in Windows a as Microsoft Azure. So our website service, our mobile services in Azure, my team builds, as well as our media services and uh, so forth. So it's a broad portfolio of technologies and products on top of that infrastructure that Scott spent a good deal of time in his keynote talking about the foundation uh, that's been laid. Um, it's uh, Vivek Dalvi, who maybe you met, uh, you've met before and uh, spoke last year, is still here. He uh, works for me. Uh, he's on the team running uh, the BizTalk business, actually now here from Redmond. And so it's great to have him here. But as we discussed this particular session, um, he suggested that I give it. Because as you'll see, we were thinking about BizTalk and integration in particular as core to our application platform. We're expanding our investments quite significantly to enable it as part of uh, our modern app portfolio. So I'll dive into that uh, in just a minute. And uh, Vivek and his team will spend a lot of the rest of the day uh, expanding into uh, exactly the building blocks that we're putting down and how those will work. Scott uh, introduced, uh, I think, his keynote talking about this new mobile-first, cloud-first world we, we uh, live in. It's never been more apparent to me than it is sort of each time I come and hear him speak and I think about the rapid progress of change that we're all experiencing. I, I've been in Azure now three years, which is just about as long as maybe you've been making your way here. Let me ask, actually ask, how many of you have been here the last three years at the Integrate Summit? Can I see your hands? Okay, quite a few of you, probably 40% of the audience at least, and maybe some of you are taking a drink or whatnot. Um, maybe more of you have been here before. Three years, think back to the last three years' keynotes and what you've seen presented. Um, just seeing Scott present sort of our cloud story the last three years, as I reflect back, it's amazing the pace of change that we see happening in the industry, the pace of change we see at Microsoft and how Microsoft is transforming into a mobile-first, cloud-first business, and the pace of change of our products and our portfolio. Uh, it is a, a rapid pace of change, sometimes overwhelming. And my goal today is to help sort of lay out how we think about integration in the context of that change and how we're adapting our approach to integration to help you be more successful, both as our longtime customers and partners around BizTalk. Uh, when I started out in this industry about 20 years ago, I was actually responsible for um, setting up and maintaining an RS6000 uh, beast with uh, terminals around the store. It was a retail store environment um, with some custom programmed uh, point of sale, uh, inventory, tracking, uh, finance applications. And um, it, was, uh, it was an awesome job. It was sort of my first foray into uh, managing and maintaining computer systems and, and writing software uh, in this industry. And I've been sort of responsible and involved in building internet and cloud technologies ever since. In fact, uh, I've uh, been my, now at Microsoft 15 years and spent my entire career building our web platform, IIS, ASP.NET, Visual Studio Tooling, and then expanding that into mobile and uh, media services uh, the, the, the last uh, eight years or so. Uh, in Azure, uh, we look at these kinds of applications all the time as customers think about the transition to cloud and how to bring them. You know, you've, I'm sure, experienced the, the transition as well. Maybe you still have some RS6000s or at least uh, I, you know, IBM or other mainframe systems supporting your business today. You've certainly seen and perhaps still have uh, uh, client server applications like a Delphi or Visual ba uh, Basic based application connecting to those, uh, those systems on the back end. But we've also seen 
uh, this millennial generation coming into our workforce and uh, expecting something different from an application experience. You think about those graduating from college, entering the workforce now, and for the last seven or eight years, they've grown up with probably the most popular computer being the one they carry in their pocket, right? And application experience is informed by the mobile apps they get to message friends, to interact with uh, other students, uh, to get and, and uh, exchange information. You know, and the experience, the expectation that they carry into the enterprise is uh, pretty significant. And yet, those apps from the past are still there and still primarily support the business today. Uh, all of you probably carry a mobile phone, probably a smartphone in your pocket. Think about how much time you spend on it now versus three years ago, versus seven years ago. I'm guessing the time you spend on it is much, much more every single day that goes by. I think it was last year we exceeded seven times more mobile devices sold in the industry than PCs. Seven times more mobile devices. Um, and it's only going to continue. And so as we think about, again, this mobile-first, cloud-first world, we're thinking about how to ensure that we're delivering experiences that meet the expectation that's informed by consumer apps on the devices people love, but still supporting the great infrastructure and systems on the back end. Uh, this transformation we're in sort of it, it shifts how we think about apps, right? In the past, you used to come to work, you go to work, you sit down at your desk to do your job, and now a lot of us carry work in our pocket everywhere we go, to the restaurant, to the store, sometimes in bed where we don't really want to do work, but uh, we get the notification that something's going on, we got to get involved. Uh, we are seeing the shift from PC and web again to mobile devices. We see the shift from interacting with the computer through keyboard and mice to touch voice and other sensors. Uh, Scott talked about Internet of Things and how this massive influx of data is happening. Uh, data used to come from users inputting it through those keyboard and mice, and now it's coming not only from people, but also devices and uh, systems that are connected across clouds. Uh, we used to think about workflow as something that was transacted maybe between systems within your data center, and now we've got data that needs to be orchestrated across clouds, not only in your data center, but across SaaS systems, across public cloud, private cloud boundaries, et cetera. And you know, we used to run applications within a PC or within a data center, and now we think applications, we see applications spanning data centers, spanning countries, spanning the world even. And hybrid cloud uh, is a reality and will become even more prevalent in the coming years. When we thought about, you know, as we thought about uh, traditional app integration, you know, we used to think about, on the back end, enterprise apps being installed within the data center, and then a vertical or specialized piece of software like BizTalk Server being installed to help integrate them. And there were a few touch points that were more or less tightly coupled to exchange data to enable that application integration or so forth. And you may still have many of these systems running in your data center today. Certainly, we believe they're not going to go away anytime soon. And our commitment to BizTalk Server continues to be as strong as it has been. We will continue to support it. We'll continue to update it and make it uh, uh, compatible and support your business needs with new operating systems as they come out, with new versions of SQL Server as they come out. But as Scott showed, uh, app integration means something even more than that today. It means connecting not only between applications running within your data center, but connecting applications uh, with partners, with even SaaS uh, application vendors in the cloud. And the, uh, the number of touch points has multiplied significantly, and the touch points are also, much, in some cases, much more loosely coupled. Uh, and uh, and uh, the agility with which you need to create them and, and bring them down is uh, even greater. So we believe that the success for a modern application platform is to provide not only a great integration stack, but make it prolific, make it prevalent through the entire application stack itself. So developers building applications have access uh, natively to SaaS systems and to enterprise software whenever they consider building an application experience. Uh, let's talk a little bit about business-to-business uh, -business transactions. In the past, again, we've had a specialized piece of software like a BizTalk server that set up a fixed 
set, uh, with a fixed set of uh, B2B protocols and schemas that needed to be exchanged. Um, there was a lengthy onboarding process, setting up uh, contracts, onboarding, a partnership agreement, and uh, opening up firewalls to ensure that the data could trans you know, transverse between companies. Um, maybe sometimes it was hard, uh, without the cloud, to plan for seasonal spikes, seasonal demands uh, with the partnership. So you had to stand up all the infrastructure necessary to support maybe a holiday season sale or a particular event going on within the company. And partnering in the cloud era, we, we see, looks very different, right? Many more partners uh, that need to be connected with uh, and data exchanged between. Also, we want to see a quicker, more simple partner onboarding process that can happen in uh, hours or days, not weeks or months or years. We also uh, see the, with um, the evolution of protocols, much more cloud-friendly friendly protocols with XML and JSON support over HTTP, transversing firewalls through port 80 to make the uh, exchange of data much simpler. And with the advent of cloud, the ability to uh, take advantage of auto-scaling and compute environments that you don't have to maintain and manage year long, but can scale up and scale down on demand. So as we think about integration and application platform, we can, came up with eight sort of fundamentals that we strongly believe in, that we want to bake into our application platform going forward to support these trends that we're all experiencing. The first and, and potentially the, the most uh, impactful is we want to think about integration as, uh, part of an uh, as a part of an application platform, part and parcel with building application experiences for web browsers, for mobile devices, is also thinking about connecting data and connecting ap those applications to other applications. Uh, we fundamentally believe, as Scott said, in a hybrid cloud world where your investments are going to continue to be on premise and you're also going to invest in public cloud applications and SaaS. And so we want to ensure that you can connect those SaaS systems as they're adopted either by yourself or by business departments or uh, other clients so that you can access those data and systems just as easily as you integrated potentially an on-premise uh, ERP or CRM system. We want to make sure that um, we're enabling business users to be agile and to help uh, as much self-service their needs as possible. In the past, when business processes were defined, potentially by a business user, they often were handed off to a developer uh, or a, a systems integrator to actually craft the business process and code. To the extent we can, we want to enable self-service for those users through a web-based experience so that the owner of the business process can actually define it in a simple way potentially using abstractions or encapsulations that developers build underneath and uh, self-service the business process for greater agility. We also believe that no matter how much work we do, uh, there's going to be more and more necessary to connect this vast ecosystem of SaaS systems and clouds. And so fundamentally, uh, as part of our application platform, we're taking an ecosystem-driven approach. We want our partners to be able to uh, integrate easily with our platform and to extend it with connectors that uh, support uh, their particular business um, in the cloud as well. Also, obviously, it has to be inter enterprise grade. You've got to have great compliance, great security, great performance and scale, no matter if it's running in the private cloud or public cloud, and we're committed to that. Uh, and it has to support cloud scale, so if you do support businesses with seasonal demands or you know, spikes that you need to support. Uh, you can ramp up and down capacity, again, as you need. And last, uh, we believe in an open platform to support open source. So you can use the tools and technologies that you have throughout your business to extend our integration services, to extend our platform. So you'll see all of these fundamentals in action as I dive in now. Uh, I just wanted to spend a minute to talk about sort of these as the guiding principles with which we're designing our new platform. Today, uh, if you look at Azure and our public cloud application platform, you see uh, five distinct services. Our Azure website service uh, for building out uh, web applications. Um, we support lots of cross-framework, uh, um, cross-framework, uh, cross-platform frameworks for building applications, including Node, Java, .NET, PHP, Python, et cetera. It's a very popular service. In fact, it's got more subscribers than any other Azure service today. Uh, fa very fast-growing service. 
Uh, we've got mobile services for building mobile backend services in the cloud to support iOS, Android, uh, Windows Phone. We've got media services for encoding and streaming, uh, secure content, live and on demand. In fact, media services was the service that uh, uh, was backending the Olympics last year. We also support NFL uh, football, uh, the World Cup. Many of the large on, largest online events use our Azure media services technology. We've also obviously got BizTalk services as a public cloud offering uh, that we're growing up and nurturing uh, for a public cloud support of integration. And uh, this year we stood up API management as well as a front end for either on-premise or public cloud APIs. Each of these services is a great business for us to be in. We, we're committed to them. We think they're important public cloud services. At the same time, as we've looked at um, the portfolio and as, we, as we've spoken to customers about how they consume them, it's clear that uh, really what you're after is a solution. And oftentimes, you may use uh, one of these particular services. In fact, in this room, I'm sure BizTalk Server and BizTalk Services are a focus. But it's often in the context of the other ones as well. You're integrating a web application with a backend system or a mobile application with a backend system. And uh, we think we can do better than having a distinct hosting environment, extensibility model, management experience for each of them that's distinct. And so what I'm going to spend some time talking about is how we've been busy refactoring our application platform and putting integration at the core. This is a, a new approach that uh, uh, takes our existing investments, our existing technologies, and just refactors them in a way which provides a common application container and a cross-platform extensibility model to support all types of applications. Um, it's also going to provide out-of-box SaaS connectivity, integrated API management, and uh, built-in hybrid connectivity. So you can run public cloud, connect to on-premise systems um, right out of the box. And of course, we're going to make it available both in the public cloud and on-premises. So the rest of the um, talk, I'm going to actually talk about these building blocks and the investments we're doing. And the, the next two days, you're actually going to get drill down sessions on each of the pieces here and how to take advantage of them. Uh, let me actually, though, before we uh, talk about those, show you a demo of the current working code in action. So come on up, Prashant. He's going to show us a demo that's pretty simple, and it's probably a scenario you're very familiar with, uh, where there's a front end. Uh, clients would be using a mobile application, in this case, running on a tablet. Uh, that front end system submits data into an application environment. In this case, it's a travel request. And it goes to a workflow for um, approval. And that workflow process will actually connect to SAP, uh, connect to SendGrid, connect to uh, an ASIM uh, travel bureau service. And so it's connecting to public cloud SaaS systems as part of the workflow. And finally, if the workflow gets approved, then it ends up in the uh, web app portal for the travel booking agent to see that there's a new booking. So probably a very familiar scenario to you. And we're going to show basically each of these systems in action in a quick glimpse uh, running on the new code base. So go ahead, Prashant. Thanks, Bill. I hope everyone can hear me OK. All right. So um, hi, I'm Prashant. Uh, I'm a PM on the BizTalk team. And, uh, uh, you know, we're working uh, towards putting the BizTalk piece in the entire stack that uh, Bill just talked about. And uh, uh, the scenario that we're taking to demo here is, uh, let's say, you know, our favorite folks at Contoso uh, who want to put together an application uh, for their employees to go make travel bookings. And, um, of course, in the new world, you would want that to be uh, an application that can sit on their tablet. Um, and that request would land all the way to the back end with Acme, who's actually their travel booking partner, who actually handles all their bookings. And uh, let's, we're going to see how we kind of go put this together, right? Uh, as a part of the demo, we're gonna sh uh, what we've basically done is we've taken uh, our work in progress uh, that we're you know, working hard uh, to ship really quickly to you guys. Uh, so what you're going to see is real life code. Um, and uh, it's, it's work in progress, so you might see a few glitches in the UI and stuff, uh, but, but it's, it's stuff that we're really proud to show you out here today. Okay, um, I'm going to start with the um, application on the client, uh, which is essentially uh, what an employee in Condoso would use to go uh, make a travel booking. Um, 
the what Contos really needs is that the request lands all the way to Acme, but uh, not before they're able to do a bunch of checks on that particular request, right? Uh, like any business, they have requirements on uh, what's what's the policy of travel booking. There's a spend limit on what you can do. Uh, it depends on uh, a lot of things that uh, that's kind of uh, dependent on their corporate policy, right? So. Um, uh, let's look at the client application that's like a fairly simple app uh, that we put together. And uh, it just takes a form and uh, you fill in a bunch of uh, uh, data into the form, provide your ID where you're going. Um, and let's kind of now look at once I submit this particular um, request, where it would land. So uh, what's spinning up right now is a private build of, uh, of Azure portal uh, in which we have integrated our code. And uh, uh, the, this is the familiar uh, Azure portal that you guys use uh, already today. And uh, <clears throat> let's wait, give it a minute to start up. So um, this is, uh, this is essentially the place we've kind of gone and integrated our code. And uh, let's start with creating a workflow that Contoso wants to create that sits in the middle of the client application I just showed you, and a web service that Acme is uh, uh, going to expose for uh, pro uh, sending out the travel request to them. Right? Uh, creating a new workflow in Azure is going to look very similar to how you go create any kind of new resources. Uh, from the new, uh, from the new uh, drawer out there. And there you see there's a workflow that shows up in the gallery. And uh, you just don't have to start from scratch. We'll have a bunch of uh, pre-baked templates, uh, if you will, uh, that would show up in the gallery that you can pick and start customizing and not have to kind of go build everything from, uh, from an empty canvas. Uh, for the purpose of this demo, we've put together an automated travel booking template. So I'm just going to go hit uh, create on that. and. Uh, uh, what this uh, template really lets you do is it's got a bunch of pre-baked set of shapes that uh, 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 that put together this end-to-end -to -end workflow, right? Um, like any other template, you would be able to kind of go uh, drill into it, modify it, make configuration changes. Um, what we've done here is uh, that we've gone and pre-baked some of those settings into the template, and we walk through what exactly this template does. Uh, let's call it console workflow and hit create, right? So what this is really doing is deploying uh, the workflow at the back end. And uh, now let's go uh, to the client and see what happens when I submit a travel request uh, and it hits this workflow. So I'm going to put in my ID. I'll say I'm going to go from Seattle to New York. And my travel dates are this, and I'm going to go hit book my ticket. So uh, what happens when I hit book my ticket is that the client is posting a request to the workflow, um, and uh, the uh, and the app tells me that you know my request is in process. Uh, there's a workflow that's going to run and tell me back whether that got approved or not. Let's go back to the uh, to the portal, and so this is the portal where we composed the uh, workflow end to end. is also the place where you can see what's actually happening live uh, with your particular workflow. Uh, and we see there's an instance running. Let's kind of dig deeper and zoom into what this workflow is doing. Uh, this workflow has a trigger, uh, which is an HTTP listener, uh, which essentially is the endpoint to which my client application posted, right? And which means that your client could be actually running on iOS or Android, and you could go build all those apps for uh, Contoso's employees uh, to you know, pick and choose what they like. Uh, once the request kind of flows in, uh, we want to kind of go do some of the typical things that you were able to do uh, in an EAI world, right? Uh, you want to validate the uh, data that's coming in. And then, uh, because I gave just my ID, there's additional data that the workflow needs to be able to decide what my spending limit is. So it reaches out to SAP, pulls out my designation, pulls out my, um, you know, uh, past history of spending, and it pulls out which region I may be in. Um, and then it passes all of this data further to a rule. Um, this rule shape is really running a full-blown rule engine at the back end. Um, so essentially, while your workflow definition might just remain the same, 
uh, you know, if it's simple enough, like if you're above your spending limit, you're not allowed the booking. If it's below, it's great. Uh, but the policy that computes a spending limit might be something that's lot ch changing a lot more frequent, right? And a rule uh, is a great way to kind of abstract out your business policy from the actual workflow definition. We actually have a great session tomorrow uh, to talk about rules, and so please be there for that. Uh, we're going to talk about how rules can be created. Uh, once the rule executes, uh, the workflow the workflow checks uh, whether I'm below my spending limit or above, um, and uh, once it's done that, it goes off and uh, makes a request to uh, Acme. Uh, the box that you see as Acme out there is really wrapping a web service that Acme hosts at the back end to receive uh, you know, um, booking requests from Contoso. And so uh, you know, I've just gone and composed all of that together in this workflow. Uh, once all of that is done, I want to tell the employee whether the things worked or not. And so I want to use SendGrid, which is a SaaS service, to send back a uh, send back an acknowledgement to the uh, employee, right? Uh, let's see if my request actually landed with Acme. Uh, this is the web service that Acme has, and that's the dashboard that Acme uses to track their current open orders. Uh, let's go hit refresh on that and see if uh, the request actually landed. There you see, um, you know, my travel request is now registered with Acme, and hopefully um, I should be on my way to New York pretty soon. And I got an email uh, from the workflow that tells me that I'm good to go. That's it. All right. All right. Thanks, sir. All right, so uh, a pretty basic scenario, but showing you basically uh, the kinds of scenarios we're thinking about as we think about integrating web and mobile applications with business process, with uh, B2B and EAI scenarios. So I want to talk now about the elements of the application platform stack that we're bringing together to give you a sense for those, and then we'll spend the rest of the next couple of days diving deep in each of the sessions. It starts with sort of a foundation around app containers and hosting. And uh, we're not building any of this from scratch. We're starting with actually a foundation that's in Azure today and that supports uh, a large scale of applications and transactions every single day. In fact, um, on our app platform services, we already support more than 400,000 apps hosted uh, across 300,000 customers. Um, you can see the traffic growth is phenomenal, almost uh, 2 billion requests every single day. And that continues to grow in a compound way. It was just 1 billion like three months ago, actually. So the number of transactions continues to scale. And the great news as well is this same platform that we've got already supports hybrid connectivity, has uh, open language support for Java, Node, PHP, uh, and of course .NET. And we ship it as part of Azure Pack. So it's already available on premise. Our, our, um, our approach then is to take this foundation and build on it the next several uh, layers that I'm going to talk about and continue to support it both in the public cloud and through Azure Pack on premises. So let's go up to the next layer in the stack. Uh, the next thing we're going to build into that stack is uh, native API management. Now we already have an API management service in Azure today, which you haven't checked out, you should. It's a great service. Uh, we GA'd just a couple of months ago and it's going to continue to evolve and get enhanced. But we're also going to bake it into this application platform as a native part of building applications. It'll allow developers who are supporting APIs or building their own APIs to have throttling, rate limiting, quota support for the application, offer modern formats. So if you want a REST um, uh, endpoint on top of an existing SOAP uh, web service, for example, you can do that right within the API management uh, service without having to rewrite the code. We've got authentication and key management. So um, built-in support for single sign-on, built-in support for uh, storing keys for both user and application-based authentication on the back end, and built-in built uh, logging and analytics. You can tell what's going on with the APIs uh, within the application. On top of that API management layer then, uh, we're going to have a microservice runtime for building APIs 
uh, that make it easy to extend the platform. Uh, in fact, we're going to use the same uh, public uh, extensibility point, as you'll see in a minute, to build hundreds and hundreds of APIs ourselves. This is what you'll use if you're a partner or a customer of BizTalk today to extend uh, uh, the, the platform to connect to your own systems, in, your own internal systems, or to connect to SaaS systems. The microservice runtime will support, again, cross-platform. We're an open platform, so you'll be able to build microservices in any language. Um, we'll support manually or auto-updating those microservices uh, in a gallery fashion, so you can actually submit them into a private enterprise gallery within your corporation or a public gallery if you're consuming a SaaS connection from, say, Microsoft or one of our partners, and it'll automatically get updated, or you can manually update it as you need to. We'll have deep logging and diagnostic support for these APIs, uh, so you can tell what's going on within the system and diagnose problems and easily uh, fix them. And um, we're going to surface all of these, uh, uh, both Microsoft and our partner uh, microservices, in that marketplace that sh Scott showed earlier today. So you'll be able to find many of them, obviously, uh, from Microsoft for free as part of the platform, and also an, a partner opportunity for monetizing microservices and SaaS connections um, as you see fit. On top of that microservice runtime, then, uh, we're going to provide a whole set of microservices out of the box. We've been investing for some time now to bring uh, literally dozens of the most high-priority connectors that our customers are telling us you want and uh, implementing those. So we'll have support for the ones you see up here, um, supporting all the standard protocols uh, that, you use, that you see in BizTalk Server today and that you use, as well as common enterprise apps on-premise and popular consumer and enterprise SaaS systems. So everything from Twitter and Facebook, if you want to pull out uh, consumer sentiment or product sentiment data, to uh, SaaS systems like Office 365, uh, Salesforce, Workday, Concur, et cetera. And these will all be available uh, through the marketplace um, as we launch the new preview. Of course, uh, consistent with that, we're, going to, uh, we're taking the existing BizTalk service and server features and we're also porting them as microservices inherent to the platform. So you'll be able to take, as you saw in the previous demo, say the validation or the extract format conversion microservice capability, and blend that with any of those SaaS connectors uh, and, uh, and or you know, existing traditional protocols, and build out an, in a, an application integration scenario um, that's unique and distinct to your requirements. In addition uh, to the uh, BizTalk, server, uh, BizTalk services microservices, we're also going to have a workflow engine that takes care of orchestrating uh, and calling those microservices uh, in a uniform fashion. This is also a piece of technology that is already existing in Azure. It actually is responsible for the orchestration of resource deployment in Azure. So you know, when you saw Scott do that uh, SharePoint server farm demo, and he clicked that button. Well, he didn't quite click it. I, just, I saw he canceled it. I didn't think he wanted to pay the bill for that one, uh, for the demo. But if he were to click that, dem that button, the orchestration of creating nine VMs and SQL databases and a Active Directory instances, all of that orchestration is actually handled by a service called Azure Resource Manager today. That same engine is what we're bringing to bear in this integrated application platform to run both automated and human workflows. In fact, the demo that you saw, you saw it in action, right? connecting across BizTalk uh, service microservices as well as SaaS connectors. And it will um, basically accept a workflow definition. We, we happen to store that today in a JSON-based uh, file. So you can store it on disk. You can share it with other people. You can check it into source code if you're a developer. And it accepts that JSON file definition and then orchestrates the API execution um, as defined in the file. It supports both on-demand and long-running processes and control flows has a rich logging and diagnostics engine. And um, on top of it, we are building that web-based designer. You saw sort of an early um, prototype of that that's continuing to evolve to enable both developers as well as business users to create and define those workflows uh, without having to write code or have specialized tooling. So that's uh, the next step on top of those APIs that will enable for automating business process. And then, of course, as I said, uh, we're integrating all of this capability with our existing web and mobile uh, services. 
So um, the same capabilities you have today for building those mobile backends or web applications, you can use in the same context using the same hosting model and same extensibility points. Uh, with built-in auto scale and load balancing, so uh, you can adjust to seasonal demands with high availability and auto patching. It's a complete PaaS platform, you know, no longer worrying about having to patch uh, individual OS instances and so forth. And we provide great integration with our developer services. So if you're a developer or partner ISV building uh, microservices yourself, you can enjoy continuous integration with GitHub or our own VSO, uh, Visual Studio Online services, and DevOps uh, support all built into the platform. You probably have a bunch of questions. And I'll answer a few of them right, right out of the gate. Um, you know, for example, I've, uh, I wonder if you're thinking, will you support any kind of migration from BizTalk server or services. Um, first of all, I'll just say, those aren't going away. You'll see in the next slide, they're, they're all going to be enhanced uh, this coming year in 2015. But the answer is yes. We will make it easy to transition to this integrated platform. You may be wondering, um, will I be able to just use the integration features, the BizTalk microservices that I saw on that slide, without having to worry about building web or mobile apps or media? Yes, absolutely. You can use the integrated platform just for the pieces that you want. It's built in a very uh, modular, composable way, so you can bring just the set of things that you need. And then obviously, will you ship that integrated platform on-premises so I can use it as part of uh, an on-premise deployment and have consistency with what's in the public cloud? And again, the answer is yes. It will be available as part of an updated Azure pack in the future uh, once we've uh, finalized it in the public cloud. Probably the biggest question that might be on your mind is, it sounds interesting, but when is it going to happen? Uh, the good news is um, uh, we're on track to deliver that in the first quarter of 2015. So uh, again, this is not a rewrite or a re-architecture. It's really a refactoring of the technologies and capabilities we've been investing in for the last several years and bringing it together in a way which we think will be even more powerful um, than what we have today. Uh, along with that, then, BizTalk Server, we will continue to uh, support. And in fact, we've got an update plan for 2015 uh, that will coincide with uh, updates that are coming to uh, Windows Server and SQL Server platforms as well. And uh, the BizTalk services that are in market today, in fact, in GA form today, are going to continue be, to be supported under SLA uh, for the foreseeable future. So if you're on those services today. Don't worry about them going away. They're certainly not going to. If you're planning a transition to them, you can keep, you know, keep that transition plan going because it'll help you as you uh, uh, move towards this integrated platform. Uh, that's actually the content that I have. Um, I, but uh, thanks again for coming out. And we'll go ahead and transition to the next session. Thank you. Guys.